So I'm here at the MS Trust conference and alongside me I've got MS Guru, Gavin Giovannoni. Gavin, good morning. Thank you. What do you think are some of the biggest challenges facing people with MS at the moment? Well, it depends on the pathway. You know, I think there are challenges across the pathway from the diagnostic phase all the way through uh, early uh, and advanced and, and terminal phases of, of the disease. So, um, at, But underpinning all that is probably access to services and good quality services. Uh, I think when, you know, as part of our variance meeting, we highlighted, depending where you are in the country, how variable the services can be and the waiting times to get assessed and on, on to treatment. And I think that is the biggest issue we have, is, is the variability in MS service provision in the UK. So there is a postcode lottery, in your view at the moment, what can be done about that lottery? Well, I think first of all, we've got to highlight the lottery, and then we have the data. The data can then be used for business cases, for uh, creating policy statements and getting politicians to get engaged, because at the end of the day, politicians hate variability. So, you know, they've got to, they have to answer why isn't the service in this part of the country as good as that part of the country, and that creates at least the momentum for change. You know, I think that's what we need to do. And uh, there's also this enormous number of people that have just fallen out of the service. So when you go to, across the country and you do these little local audits, you find anything between 10 and 25 percent of MS patients aren't even attached to a service. So they just have been looked after by their GP and they just accept that there's nothing that can be done for them. And I think we need to get the message out to people with the disease that they need to become activated, they need to become uh, politically active. I'm talking about politics here, yeah? and they need to lobby their gen general practitioners, they need to lobby their MS services, they need to lobby politicians to improve the services locally. But while you're doing that, the reality is the challenge might be getting bigger because the prevalence of MS seems to be now be going up from about 107,000 to at least 130,000 in the UK. So what can we do about that? Well, I think that's another uh, a bit of information that needs to be put into a policy statement. I think it's possibly higher than that. I think we, we always underestimate the incidence and prevalence of this disease. And there was a wonderful uh, audit done, um, a new incidence prevalence study in the Highlands and the um, Western Isles from Inverness, which showed that in the last seven years, Years, the incidence and prevalence has gone up 30%. So there's this epi it's actually an epidemic going on. I mean, uh, we're not doing anything about uh, monitoring this epidemic. Uh, we know that MS is potentially preventable. We really do need to get uh, funding agencies research behind MS prevention, and that's another big unmet need. Is, you know, we should be starting these studies sooner than later because we do know that there are quite a few modifiable risk factors. And unless we can modify these risk factors and see if we are imp uh, affecting the incidence and prevalence, you know, we're going to be letting down the next generation of people with the disease. You know, they shouldn't be getting this disease if we can prevent it. So the reality is we're in a political situation at the moment. If you had a five-point manifesto for the MS community at the moment, what would that be? Uh, big funding push on prevention, a big funding push on improving services, and a big funding push on advanced MS, getting those people that have been forgotten and thought that nothing can be done back into the services. That's going to need big investment in the NHS. But at the end of the day, uh, most of the MS services are just running flat out. We're just fighting fires. We don't have any spare capacity. We are on the bones in terms of uh, what we can do. And that's because of all the, changing, uh, all the changes in the environment. I mean, there's austerity Britain. Most of our NHS trusts are under special measures. There is no finance for anything else. They're expecting us to do more with less. You, you speak to most of the MS nurses, yeah, half of them are burnt out because they just can't do with, they can't deal with the workload. So we really have to have a fundamental change in the way we approach MS. And the MS Trust is about to launch a campaign for more MS nurses. What would be your view about that? I would support it. I mean, at the end of the day, they're the people that run the service. Um, but what we really need to get uh, behind what we is the ratio. You know, uh, in our service now, our, our two nurses are, are seeing about, they've got about 800 patients on their books each. And we, we know that your ratio is about 320, if I remember correctly, 330 mm -hmm. per one nurse. It needs to be driven home over and over again. If we want to actually keep our nurses and not stop them from being burnt out and providing a service, we really need to fund them uh, and, and, uh, and fund them properly. Um, Yes, I would definitely support any program. Uh, our nurses are absolutely fundamental to our MA service. They're the people that make it run. You know, without the nurses, the service will fall apart. And what about those people with a uh, progressive MS? Because the reality is we've got more and more disease-modifying drugs that have come online. Uh, there's about 40,000 people at the moment who have been supported directly by the MS centres up and down the country. 
But our experience at the MS Trust is there are more and more people with progressive MS who are not being supported. What would you do about that? Well, I think one of the things is we've got to get rid of the dogma that uh, the more advanced, when you've got more advanced disease, progressive disease is not modifiable. Mm. We've just got a drug license for primary progressive disease. There's potentially a drug coming for secondary progressive disease. And we think the disease is modifiable for throughout its course. So we're actually starting two trials, one in primary and one in a more advanced secondary progressive disease, with the, uh, with the pr primary focus being upper limb function. So we think even when people are in wheelchairs, we could potentially modify their uh, disease and slow down the worsening in terms of their upper limb function and keep them independent. And so this uh, dogma that's crept into the MS field that once you get to a wheelchair, you c there's nothing you can be done, it's, it's not true. You know? So we need to challenge this dogma. We need to get, uh, encourage people with more advanced disease to get back into their services. And also, it's, always, it's not always about disease-modifying treatments. It's about stopping them getting bladder infections, stopping them getting pressure sores. It's helping them with spasticity. It's improving their sleep at night. All these things improve quality of life, and that's what a, a comprehensive, holistic MS service should be providing. And at the moment, we're so taken up by just managing the diagnostic early uh, disease-modifying therapy phase, we haven't got capacity to look after people with more advanced disease. So a big unmet need would be uh, uh, up, in, or up in the skill set um, uh, and the services to, to deal with people with more advanced disease. And you're speaking at the MS Trust Conference this year. What are you speaking about, Gavin? I'm speaking about food coma. Um, um, it started off as a blog post and then I got invited by the MS Trust to come and speak about food coma and what it, it basically was around an index case of mine who said she, her fatigue and her functioning after a meal was just impossible so she was actually starving herself. Uh, so she could function during the day and then uh, only eating her meals in the evening so she could crash afterwards. And so we then did an audit and found that actually is a big problem. People with multiple sclerosis are much more sensitive to what's a normal phenomenon. It's called postprandial hypersomnolence. When you eat a meal, you want to fall asleep. Mm. And um, it looks like people with multiple sclerosis are, uh, have a worse postprandial hypersomnolence. And uh, there are things we can do about it. So I'm talking about treatment strategies, how you can manage that. And it, uh, it's basically optimizing fatigue. And you attend conferences around the world. What's yep. your take on the MS Trust Conference? Well, the MS Trust Conference is a, it's a fantastic networking event. So you get the feeling that people are, yeah, really love what they're doing. Um, and they look forward to coming together every year. But also it's very practical. That's the most important thing. It's, we're not talking about you know, high science. What gets discussed here can actually imp be implemented in your clinic the next day. And I think that's why people, people in the MS feel like coming here for that reason. And so finally, your message to the MS community whether at the Trust conference or elsewhere, what's your one message to the MS community in 2019? Um, keep going, uh, be resilient, and there's lots happening in the field. So, uh, and, uh, and the most important thing is to think about MS holistically. Try not to divide up this, this field into little groups and silo, and silo everybody into little groups. You've got to think about this disease holistically, and uh, we'll make we'll make a big difference to our patients, improve the quality of life. Gavin Giovinoni, thank you very much. Pleasure.